Bordeaux is one of the greatest and most replicated wines in the world. The traditional red Bordeaux grapes are Cabernet Sauvignon, Merlot, Cabernet Franc, Carmenere, Petit Verdot, and Malbec. The wines based off these grapes that were made famous in Italy are Sassacaya, which came out in the early 60s, Ornelia in the early 80s. However, there's a long history of appreciation of French grapes in Italy. In a recent article, Ian Diaga even stated in the 40s, Italian nobility, they weren't drinking Tuscan wines. For the most part, they were drinking French wines. There's a tiny appellation in Tuscany called Carmignano, which is near Florence. That's the first appellation in Tuscany and Italy, for that matter, to not only allow, but require Cabernet Sauvignon into the blend. The consortia there at Carmignano claims that Cabernet Sauvignon's been there since the 16th century, which suggests that these French red grapes do have a long history in Italy. I think wines based off the Bordeaux grapes do taste different in Italy, like they taste different in Napa or Margaret River in Australia. The wines in Tuscany that were made famous using these grapes are called Super Tuscans, and today we're going to taste two very good Super Tuscans next to two very good Red Bordeaux. Super Tuscan is not a classified term, it's a colloquial term. It was invented by critics. They saw the potential for great Bordeaux-based wines in Tuscany, and they started to dub these wines Super Tuscans, or above normal Tuscan wines. Earlier in 2023, I did a blind tasting of 10 different Super Tuscan wines. I'll pin it in the comments below. The wines I have in this tasting are second wines. The concept of a second wine is Bordelais. Its origins date back to the 18th century where chateaus used declassified wines to release a second wine, a wine that's not as good as their Grand Ven. Although nowadays you see estates in Bordeaux making second, third, and even fourth wines. Sometimes in good vintages they can offer tremendous value for money as the price of great Bordeaux is rising. And since a lot of great estates that are making Super Tuscans are based off the Bordeaux model they're making second wines as well. Second wines are made from the same estate, same winemaking techniques. They're usually made with younger vines or when you're making the Grand Vin, the Grand Wine, there's leftover wine after blending that often gets dumped in the blend to create the second wine. I've personally found since the quality of wines is raising all around the world pretty rapidly, the quality of second wines is going up too. However, that also means there's a rise in price. Just a side note, I do have an upcoming video where I'm going to blind taste second second wines next to the Grand Vins, different estates from all over the world. If that video is out by the time this is released, I'll put it in the comments. I'm thirsty, let's taste some wines. Big wines, get a taste out of a big Bordeaux glass. This is the Rito 002 Universal Red Wine Glass. Pretty big glass, I find that works well with all types of red wines, especially Bordeaux blends. Let's see how it does. Pumped about this tasting because there's only four wines. Sometimes I stress out when I do videos with like 10 wines or more, but uh, let's get to it. I have four different vintages here, 2018, 19, 20, and 21 all spread out. Again, I knew what these wines were beforehand. However, I Coravin them, had somebody mix them up. I haven't tasted all these wines more. Some of these wines I've tasted previous vintages of. Let's get on it. Wine number one, this classic, classic, minerally Cabernet tasting on the glass. Oh, this has got a beautiful nose of minerals black raspberry, black cherry. The mineral hit really comes off. There's a leather component to it. It smells really high quality. Some of these wines are pretty affordable. Some are a little bit more expensive, but this smells super high quality. I love the leather note to it. I do have a wine from Pesac Leonion, and I wonder if that's it, because this gravelly taste really reminds me of that. This is suave, this is excellent. Good length, the tannins are super fine grained. They're not too puckering. The thing about second wines is a lot of times they're made to be drunk a little bit younger, whereas the Grand Ven, a lot of times you need to age them. They show best after 10 to 15 years. You really do notice a difference when you taste between the second wine and the Grand Ven. That's why I'm going to do that upcoming video, but this is great. That was really good, whatever number one was. Okay, two, different wine, a little bit more austere, a little tighter, almost like if you, you know, one was a little bit more boisterous. It's almost if you like have somebody that's in pretty good shape, they're gonna wear tight shirts, they're gonna show everything off. This one, they're gonna, this one is like, you can tell it's a good wine, but they're covered up a little bit more. They're like in their winter jacket and their scarf. This smells younger, black fruits, black plum, cassis. Doesn't have the mineral note, but, it's a little bit more floral. I, I think one had a little bit more age on it, or two is a little more floral. 
these are killer wines, especially for second wines. I know from time to time, us wine people can get bored of Bordeaux blends, but there's reason why they're so replicated. They're so good. They can be so good. I haven't been doing a lot of Bordeaux blend tasting recently, so this is kind of refreshing to me. Let's move on to three. Three is fruity up front, a touch of mahogany. It's not too oaky, but the mahogany jumps out at me. A black cherry, I think three might be Tuscan. It's got that little Tuscan flair. I don't really know how to explain it. It's kind of got like this Tuscan tanginess, this little twinkle in the eye. Really good length, it's got tannins. I really like it. These are good, let's move on to number four. In the wine world, even places like Wine Spectator, they know when they put Bordeaux on the title of an issue, they know it's gonna do well. I know exactly when I do a Bordeaux tasting, it's gonna do well on the channel. Sometimes it can be frustrating, but then you forget that there's a reason. These wines are very good. Let's move on to four here. I somehow, three is the only one where I feel like it smells Tuscan to me. I feel like Bordeaux blends in Tuscany express themselves differently, but I, not, one, two, and four, I really can't tell if they're Bordeaux or if they're Tuscan. Wait, hold on. Four has a little bit of a pencil shaving component, which I like. Tips me off as a Merlot-based wine. Pencil shaving comes out and then everything else, the dark fruit, the mahogany, the leather, everything is just balanced in a nice package here. These are some good wines. I think maybe I think maybe three and four are Tuscan. That's what I'm gonna say here. Four, it's pretty voluptuous, it's pretty generous. Just really nicely balanced. You ready for the reveal? These wines are pretty close, but there is a hierarchy. Sometimes I have ties. I do not have ties here. In fourth place, it's wine number two. It was the one that I said was good. It was floral. It was just like a really good wine, but just kind of buttoned up. It wasn't showing its best. This probably will show a little bit more with time in the bottle. You can kind of sense that. I can't really put exact words on it, but when you taste a lot of wines, you can sense when a line's good and it's just not showing its best. It's a little bit closed up right now. Still, I gave 91 plus points floral. I think it is, uh, I'm gonna say Bordeaux. Let's take a look here. <laughs> the Espirit de Chevalier from Pessac Leon in 2020. This is 29 bucks. This is the second wine to the Domaine de Chevalier, which runs in at 100 bucks, so you're getting it at a third of the price. I actually had this in a blind tasting video that was early in the year. It showed super well. I love this estate. I love the Pessac Leonian style. It makes sense. Buttoned up, it's probably gonna show its best after time. Let's move on to number three. Remember, it's the one I said has mahogany. Real full in body, rich. I do think this is Tuscan. I gave 92 plus points if you don't know what mahogany is. When I used to play guitar a lot, I used to have a Martin D15 and brown mahogany wood, and I used to smell the, the bunghole all the time because it smelled so rich, chocolatey. I think it's Tuscan, 92 plus points. It is Tuscan. This is the Il Pino di Becerno 2021. Young wine, 59 bucks. Becerno was started by Lodovico Antonori, who was one of the founders of Ornalaya, sold the estate to Mondavi Constellation, took it over, now he has his own estate. This is the second wine to the flagship Becerno, which is 150 bucks. So again, about a third of the price. This is coming on an upcoming Super Tuscan blind tasting video. 59 bucks, 92 plus points. I've always liked that wine. I know that wine has quite a bit more Cabernet Franc in the blend because I know Lodovico loves Cabernet Franc. Even Becerno even has a super premium wine made of 100% Cabernet Franc. That goes for like 300 bucks. <laughs> number four, number one, really close. Number four. Big, the pencil shaving really stood out. It had balance, it had some big time tannins. I think that it is super Tuscan. 93 points, 93 points. I thought it was very good. It is a super Tuscan. This is the Tenuta Licinia. This is the Montepoli from Toscana, 29 bucks. Great label, almost Lafitte, almost like an Abreu type label. Never tasted that wine before, 29 bucks. It's a heck of a bargain. Their more top wine is the Sasa de Fata, which is coming in upcoming blind tasting. This is around 70 bucks. Single vineyard wines, beautiful. I mean, these labels are just classy, beautiful labels. And I like that wine a lot at 29 bucks. I know that one's not so readily available. That's what stinks, but it is what it is. Number one, I thought it was Bordeaux, minerally leather. I thought it was from the Grave. I like the leather component a lot. Remember I said I felt like it had the most age on it, which it does 93 plus points. You ready? I know it's left. This is the Amaral de Becheville. 
2018. This is from St. Julian. Really balanced Appalachian on the left bank of Bordeaux. This comes in at 40 bucks. I know Becheville is one of the estates on the left bank that uses a significant proportion of Merlot in their blend. I actually had their grand then, the Chateau Becheville, in a blind tasting earlier this year. This comes in at 95 bucks, so less than half the price and 93 plus points. I thought this was gorgeous. You can see the label's quite dirty is because actually my cellar flooded and this was on the ground, so I got a little bit wet, but nice to know the wine wasn't affected and that was gorgeous stuff. 2018 is a vintage that I think is drinking great in Bordeaux early on and I like it a lot. So tell me, what do you prefer? Bordeaux, Super Tuscans, or do you prefer Australian, Chile, Argentina, Californian, South African maybe? Drop it in the comments below.